Well, good morning, you wonderful people. It's Sunday, the 11th of July, and we're still in lockdown, so we're preaching to an empty church, but we're again grateful that we're able to do it at least this way. We've been looking in the last few weeks at a series on what does it mean to say, I believe, or I'm a believer. What exactly do we believe? And so we've been looking at what does it mean to say, I believe in God the Father. Uh, last week we looked at what does it mean to say, I believe in Jesus. And this morning we want to just pick up that theme and, and look at what does it mean when I say, I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, like Father God and Jesus, has many names and titles um, throughout the New and Old Testament. And a lot of these names give us kind of an indication of what His role is and what His function is, uh, specifically in the ministry towards us in our Christian life. The Spirit's names and titles are useful in helping us to understand all that God does for us in His magnificent role in the Trinity. And so we're not going to look at all of them because there's just too many, but we're going to look at some of the most important ones that we find. And obviously the first and most common name that we find for, for Him in the Scriptures is His the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is the most common used name for the Spirit of God. And I like that because sometimes people refer to the Holy Spirit as it. Um, and they, it kind of depersonalizes him as if he's just some influence or some force. But he's a person, um, part of the Godhead. We know that because Acts 7 says that he can be resisted. Acts 7 51. You stiff necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Scriptures also tell us that as a person, he can be quenched. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 19 tells us, do not quench the Spirit. But we also know from Ephesians 4 verse 30 that He can be grieved. It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. And so we see that he is, He's a person. He's not just some influence or some force or some mystical power. He's a person and a part of the God. And that's why He's called the Holy Spirit. He's one with the Father and with the Son. We, we find Him right in the beginning of the, the Bible in Genesis. He's a part of creation. Uh, there's a beautiful passage in Scripture. Genesis 1 verse 1 and 2 says this. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the earth. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Uh, the Spirit of God was right there in the creation. And the beautiful word that's used for the Spirit of God there in Genesis in the Hebrew is, is Ruach, uh, which is translated the breath of God. The Spirit breathed power out into creation. Uh, in Job 33, He's also called the breath of the Almighty. We know from the New Testament that the Holy Spirit was the one who breathed inspiration into the writers of the Scriptures. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching and for reproof and for correction and for training in righteousness. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21 tells us a little bit more about how this works. He says this, For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And so we find this, the Spirit of God was involved from the beginning and He will be involved right till the end because He is God. He is God's Holy Spirit. The Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit to mankind and He acts on their behalf. And one of His most vital and important roles for us as Christians is that the Holy Spirit is the one who enables us to be born again. John 3 verse 5 to 6, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is so vital to our being born again. We also know what's interesting in the Old Testament, we have these glimpses of God's Spirit, God's Holy Spirit would come upon people and be with them for a while and they would leave again. Um, for example, in the case of Saul, we find that it would say that God's Spirit came upon Saul and then God's Spirit was removed from Saul. Even in Samson, it says that the Spirit of God came upon Samson and he would do these mighty acts and then the Spirit would leave. 
And how wonderful things change in the New, New Testament because Jesus says when He says, I'm, I'm going to leave you my comforter, He doesn't come and go, come and go, but He comes to stay. God's Holy Spirit is in us as born again believers and He remains in us. And so the first and most common title is He is the Spirit of God. He is God's Holy Spirit. The second beautiful name that we have for Him is He's called the Good Spirit. He's called that because the believer receives wonderful gifts through the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 22 to 23, a well-known verse on the gifts of the Spirit or the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. It's God's Holy Spirit in us that enables these fruit to grow out of us, these fruits of love and joy and peace and patience. All good gifts brought to us by the Holy Spirit. Not only does we get these, these fruits in our lives, but we, we have other gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us too. Uh, and there's many passages. One of the beautiful ones is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 11. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to one another to interpret of those tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who gives to each one as he wills. Oh man, we are so grateful that the Holy Spirit is the one who, who not only gives us fruit, but he gives us gifts. Gifts that make us useful to, to the church. Gifts that make us useful to the world. Gifts that make us different. Gifts that enable us to do the task that God has called us to do. But the Holy Spirit is not only the one who gives good gifts, but the Bible says He is a good gift given to us. He is God's good gift. I like the way Nehemiah puts it. Nehemiah says that He is a good spirit. Uh, in chapter 9 verse 20 of Nehemiah. David prayed this beautiful prayer in Psalm 25 verse 4. He said, show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. And that's what we can ask because of this beautiful gift of the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. A wise prayer for us as Christians that we, if we really desire stability in our lives, we can pray the prayer of Psalm 143 verse 10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level grounds. That's our prayer. We're saying, Holy Spirit, help us to, to stay in step with what God is doing. That's what Paul encouraged us to do when he said that we are to walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 25, he writes it this way. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. And as I was reading that scripture, keep in step with the Spirit, my, my mind went to this, this parade ground with soldiers marching in step. As the one moves, the other one moves. And as soon as one moves out of timing, it just looks so odd. And sometimes I wonder if, if we're just, we're running so far ahead. We're not in step with what God is, is wanting us to do because we're not listening and allowing His Holy Spirit to teach us and keep us in step. The Spirit is good and holy and desires to lead us in God's good and holy paths. And so he is called the Holy Spirit, he's called the Good Spirit, but he's also thirdly called the Eternal Spirit. Some people in the early church um, got this wrong and they started teaching that the Holy Spirit only came about after the book of, or during the book of Acts, after the resurrection, and that there was no Holy Spirit before that. And that's just wrong. The Holy Spirit doesn't just start or come to being in the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit always has been. And the Holy Spirit always will be because He's part of the Trinity. He is just like God the Father and just like Jesus. He is the everlasting, eternal Spirit of God. As He was involved in the creation of the first will, 
we look forward to the creation of the new world, where he will, I'm sure, have a role to play. But what's beautiful is, as we said, that he is with us forever. The fourth title that we find used in the scriptures referring to the Holy Spirit is, he's also called Lord. Christians call Jesus Lord and worship the Lord God, the Father, but the Holy Spirit is also called Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, we find this. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The Spirit of the Lord. I like what we looked at last week. We looked a little bit at the Nicene Creed. and This is what the Nicene Creed says about specifically the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all rightly called Lord. There is no competition in the Godhead. To say that the Holy Spirit is Lord is to affirm His personhood and His divinity in and amongst the Trinity. But we can also when we say that He's Lord, means that we can resist His Lordship. We do that by resisting His wooing, by not listening to those little whispers that He puts in our mind. We, we, can, we, have the, we go against what he's, he's, he's saying to us, and by doing that we quench His rule, His right to have authority over our lives. And we grieve Him when we purposely are disobedient to the Father. And in so these ways, we, we can really acknowledge that He's not really our Lord. And so we need to rather learn to walk in the power of the Most High and listen to the Holy Spirit's promptings. The fifth and most beautiful title that we have in the New Testament for the Holy Spirit is that He is called the Paraclete. And this is the Greek word which is translated as helper. And uh, it really is this idea that the Holy Spirit is our, our parakletos. And there's, there's two ways of using this word parakletos. The first one is a legal word. And it really is translated sometimes as advocate. One who, who fights legally on your behalf. This is the more formal or technical form of this word parakletos. The Spirit is our advocate. An advocate is one who pleads a case before a righteous judge. Scripture teaches us that Jesus is our advocate before the Father. Because His sacrifice on the cross enables Him to plead our case, He understands our case, having been tempted and yet without sin. So He can represent us experientially. But Jesus says not only is He our advocate, but He says the Holy Spirit is also our advocate, one who, who fights on our behalf. But the second way that this word is translated is the one that we find here in John 14. Not only is he our advocate, but he's translated as helper. And it really is the idea of coming alongside. That's literally what the word parakletos, para means alongside. One who comes alongside and walks with you is the idea. And so we have it translated sometimes as helper. For example, John 14 verse 16 to 7 says, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. So if we, if we come to know Him as our Helper, what does He help us with? Well, we find in Romans 8 that the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us when we don't know what to pray. He intercedes for us and guides our prayer life. This is how Paul writes in Romans 8, verse 26 to 27. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So grateful to know that the Holy Spirit is there to help us in our prayer life. Sometimes we just don't know what to pray. Sometimes we don't know how to pray. 
And we can truly rely on the help of the Holy Spirit who intercedes and guides us in our prayers. The second way the Holy Spirit helps us in our Christian walk is He counsels us according to truth. Just like Isaiah 11 talks about Jesus being the wonderful counselor, here the Holy Spirit too is referred to as being our wonderful counselor. Listen to what 11, uh, Isaiah 11 2 says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. That's our Holy Spirit who's in us. He is the Spirit of wisdom. He, he knows how to practically live life. And when we listen to him, we follow his promptings, he guides us into this beautiful area of wisdom and understanding. He's also the spirit of counsel and might, gives good advice. He is a great counselor. Third way he helps us is he comforts and teaches and directs us. John 14, 26 says, But the helper of the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I have said to you. Jesus said this, this to, to his disciples, saying, guys, there's some things you don't understand, but when the Holy Spirit comes, he will open your eyes and these things will make sense. Not only that, but I'll, I'll remind you of the things that I spoke. And this is how, how beautiful the Holy Spirit helps us in those times of crisis when we don't know what to do and you just brings to mind those scriptures that we memorized as a kid, or sometimes those scriptures or passages that we were holding dear to. He just, he brings them back to life. He helps us to understand God's word. He, he helps us understand and teaches us from God's word. He comforts through his teaching and directing us. He not only helps us, but he also helps the world in that he's the one who convicts of sin. John 16 verse 7 to 11 says, Nevertheless I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. If I do not go away, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. The Holy Spirit is the one who, who sears our conscience, that holds us to what's right and what's wrong. And he's the one that directs that, that even if you're not saved, you have this, this idea of right and wrong. The Holy Spirit is the one who, who brings the sinner to the place where he acknowledges that he needs help. The Holy Spirit is the one who, who opens his eyes that he can see that he is a sinner and needs help. That's his role. But as born again believers, not only is he there, but he's also there to help us to be holy. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of of God. Just like the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin as a born again believer, he, He's the one who convicts and points out things in my life that I need to make right with, things that I'm allowed to, to hold on to, that I need to let go of. Because His role in my life is to help me to become more holy. His life, His role in my life is to help me become more and more like my Father. He's the one that, that cleans my heart. And Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says that the way he helps us also is he comes alongside to empower us. Acts 1 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit's role in my life as a born again believer is to, 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 to enable me to do the powerful things of God that will be a witness of who God is. And so he is known as our paraclete. He is Lord. He is God's Holy Spirit and he is a good spirit. And then 
the sixth title that we have is we find a lot of titles in the Holy Spirit which include the name Spirit of. Spirit of. Many of the Holy Spirit's names that begin with his words, the Spirit of, um, most of them are to, to show his role in the Trinity. So we find a, a lot of them that have that. And so, for example, we have his, no, he's called the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord in Isaiah 61, verse 1. Isaiah 11 talks about him being the Spirit of the Lord. Genesis 1 verse 2 calls him the Spirit of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 3, he's called the Spirit of the living God. He's called the Spirit of your Father, Matthew 10 verse 20. He's called the Spirit of Christ and also the Spirit of the Son in Romans 8 verse 9. And so we have all these Spirit of titles that really just affirm and confirm his, his position in the Trinity. But then... There are some spirit of titles that really are relevant to us as children of God. He's known as the spirit of life. Romans 8 verse 1 and 2, I love this verse. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. He is the spirit of life. Hebrews 10 verse 29 also calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of grace. Verse, Hebrews 10 29 says, How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and who has profaned the blood of his covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the spirit of grace? Oh, may we never outrage the spirit of grace, God's merited favor upon our lives. He's also called the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19 verse 10. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him, and he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of of prophecy. Throughout the Old Testament, the, the Holy Spirit's role was to give these prophecies about Jesus. And through the New Testament, he, he becomes the one who, who points out and shows us what lies ahead. Because he is the spirit of prophecy. And as we read earlier, he's also the spirit of truth. John 14, verse 16. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will be with you forever. Even the spirit of of truth. The Holy Spirit only knows to speak truth because He is truth. He's also the Spirit of holiness. Romans 1 verse 4. And was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of holiness by His resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the Spirit of holiness. He's the one who enables us to be holy. He's the one who encourages us to live a holy life. As we saw before, he's also the sport, he's called the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Ephesians 1 verse 16 to 17 says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of of Him. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes Father God real to us. He is the one who, who explains and just reveals the Father to us. He is the Spirit of wisdom and revelation. But He's also called the Spirit of justice and judgment in Isaiah 28 verse 5 to 6. In that day the Lord of hosts will be a crown of glory, a diadem of beauty, to the remnant of his people, and the spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment. The Holy Spirit is also called the spirit of fire, or the spirit of burning, in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, cleansed the bloodstains of Jerusalem from its midst by the spirit of judgment and by a spirit of burning. It's the one that burns the dross in our hearts. And lastly, the scripture calls him the spirit 
of glory. 1 Peter 4.14 If you are insulted the name of Christ, if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. The spirit of glory rests upon you. And so as we, as we look at these roles, we just realize how vital and how important and how precious the Holy Spirit is to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you this morning for just this teaching and reminder of how important the role the Holy Spirit plays in our lives. From our beginning, born again experience, from being saved to helping us walk in spirit, to help us to, to live more godly lives, to enable us to, to understand God. Father, we thank you that we cannot do any of this without the role of your Holy Spirit. Thank you that he's not only gives good gifts, but he is a good gift to us and to the church. We honor you, we praise you, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for the role that you play in our lives. May we never take you for granted. May we never forget about you. We honor you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.